Which pack should you buy? A crossout video by Dangerously Incompetent. There's a pack sale on this weekend, so I went to the shop and had a look to see what was selling cheap and therefore what decor parts would be flooding onto the market and I can buy them up cheap and then salvage them for resources. And I was scrolling through and I noticed Insomnia pack, Player's Choice. Now I presume Player's Choice means lots of players buy it. But why? I mean, the, the build is pants. You've got Wyvern Cavin. I mean, that's 10 energy points, whereas the ground's got 11. Vectors, they're mere. What else have we got in here? White wheels? Ow. See, there's nothing, and no part in there, no weapon or cabin that's unusual or powerful or anything. So why are people buying it? And I thought, oh yeah. Because it's the cheapest pack and it comes with 650 coins. That's why. But if you shouldn't buy Insomnia Pack, which one should you buy? Well, the answer depends on why you're buying the pack. If you're planning to buy your way into Clan Wars, then you've got more money than sense. Either you've got an awful lot of money or you haven't got much sense at all. Tarjum the developers, have made it abundantly clear they neither expect nor want you to buy your way into Clan Wars, to buy your way into the end game. Gaijin, I suspect, would be happy to take your money, but Tarjem, they don't want you to. What makes me say that? Well, one, it's exceedingly expensive. You know, you're looking at at least €200 Euro to get a couple of relics and an epic cabin and sundry other stuff, and that's just getting you one Clan Wars capable build. And if the meta changes and you want a different build, well, <laughs> you're going to have to spend more. Secondly, if you do buy your way into the end game, then you're going to hit the part limit, which starts off quite low. And if you're buying packs, they can only get you up to 60 parts as a maximum number of parts on your build. Whereas if you play your way through, you can get up to 80 and you get that at, let's see, where is it? Level 25 in the Engineers. And when you, for most Clan Wars capable builds, you'll want those 20 extra parts. That's more durability, you know, and more spaced armor for your build. And you'll want those 80 parts. And then even if you get past that, the selection of structural parts that you'll have to make your build with is going to be very restricted. It's going to be the few you've earned in the engineers plus the, f the couple you bought with whatever packs you've bought. I mean, if you look at what I've got, I've got dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of parts. A wide selection, and some of them are very good, and some of them you really want. And you know, things like your train plow and your small plow, they're terribly useful, and then the hard modules, big thumping great big durability parts and you won't have that selection which will make which will make creating a clan wars build even more difficult and you won't i've got all these because i've played my way through to prestige level in all the factions if you're buying the pack as a way of buying coin i mean most of them come with a bit of coin and then there's all those parts some of which can only come into the game through the shop, that you can sell on the market for loads of coin. Either to frivolously spend them on the latest and greatest cabin or weapon or whatever it is you want to buy, or more sensibly, as investment capital for playing the market in order to speed up your economic progression through the game. Well, it, the answer so which pack it is, is held on CrossoutDB, greatest website in the world. Because it has a packs page. And if we go there to the packs page, you can see all the packs listed, and it tell, it'll tell you what's in them. And it tells you how much you can sell all those parts for. And then how many coins come with the pack, and then totals it up and divides it by the cost in whichever currency you're buying in. And you can see which one gives you the most coin for your pound or your euro or your dollar or your you or your ruble so yeah cross out db has the answer there
you may be buying a pack in order to play at a higher power score. You know, get an epic cabin, get some hovers or get some legs or whatever it is to enable you to play at a higher power score. Because you're going to get more re rewards for playing at a higher power score, aren't you? No, you're not. That's a common misconception. You get no more rewards at the higher power score. You get exactly the same power scores for playing a scrap mission at 2,000 power score as you do playing a scrap mission at 12,000 power score. The amount of reputation and amount of scrap you get so it depends solely on did your side win and how well you did compared to the rest of your team. Not your power score at all. Ah, but yeah, but you say, at higher power scores I can get batteries and batteries are worth more than scrap so I want to go up the power score. Again, no. Because the amount of batteries, the, the quantity of batteries you get decreases compared to the quantity of scrap so in actual fact the most valuable mission is the scrap one the one you can do at level four and you don't need any power score requirements the the values goes most you get the most value out of the rewards for scrap metal then wires and then batteries i i've unlocked all three and i play scrap first until I've hit the limit and then I move on to wires. Okay, there are other modes where you might want to up your power score in order to qualify, like uh, electronics, hard raids. You want to do hard raids, you fancy trying hard raids because they're a bit, maybe a bit harder, maybe a bit of a challenge, not so much these days. Or you want electronics, or you want to do complete the uh, challenges that say do hard raids, 10 hard raids, or where, however many it is. Okay, that's a legitimate reason for wanting to up your power score. The other reason you might want to up your power score is to catch up with your mate. You've been playing a while and he's playing a higher power score, so you want to make a build to match his. Well, if he was really your mate, he'd drop his pa the power score of his build to match you, wouldn't he? Hmm. Anyway, you're a newbie player and you're buying your first pack and you're buying it to for playability, to get yourself up the power scores and play with your mates, whatever. Which pack should you buy? Well, in that case, I would recommend... Where's it gone? The Drive Pack. Well, to start with, it's only €25, Euros as opposed to 60, 50 or 60 or something horrible. Admittedly, the build you get with it is pants. You never see anyone driving around in this because the weapons that come with it are poor. The piercer isn't a good weapon. The wheels, they're okay. Cheetah's pretty good for an engine, is a good engine. But the real reason you're buying this pack, oh, it comes with 1,250 coins. But the real reason you're buying this pack, or you should buy this pack, is the cabin. You're buying the favourite cabin. Why is it called the favourite? Because it's favoured by most of the player base. If we look at the market and organise our epic cabins by price, you can see it's the one that sells for the most. Uh, the icebox, which is next, isn't readily available. You can't. It's not coming into the game at the moment. It only comes in with you know the snowstorm special usually, um, and it's you know, significantly above the next cabin that comes from a pack, and is well above all the rest. And that's because the players like it. And the players like it because of its perk. Ch uh, all the rest of the cabin is pretty good. The power's good. The back speed's are okay. Tonnage and mass limit is okay. Energy is 12. Well, that's very important. And durability and mass is okay. But the perk's what what's really sets it apart. Charges while moving. When activated, resets accumulated heat of all mounted weapons and modules. You make a wedge build with this thing and you put some shotguns on it and then you drive around, charge up your perk, get close to the enemy, bang 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 bang, your shotguns overheat and stop firing. But then you use the perk and clear all the heat out. And you can go bang 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 all over again. You can effectively double the amount of damage you can do in a really short amount of time. It's a, a burst, the amount of burst damage you can do when you've got this cabin increases if you're using a weapon that stops firing because it's overheated. That's not all weapons, but sh shotguns particularly are the ones that overheat and stop firing. And 
it'll work effectively, this build will work effectively through, through all the shotgun ranges at all power scores. So if we go in shotgun and take that off, a build like that will work with the common shotgun, the Lupara, and it'll work with the sledgehammers. It works really well with the sledgehammers. You see sledgehammers in that sort of build up to you know eight, ten thousand power score, and it'll work all the way up to the relic weapons. You see, you see the the favourite cabin all the way from low power scores, not the bottom because at the bottom it's the the cabin itself costs 1,500 power score so if you're running around with a huntsman you're going to be at the lower power score but from low all the way up to the top all the way into clan wars you see favorite builds and it's not just the shotguns there are other plenty of other weapons that overheat and the favorite is a great cabin for them so that's why you should buy the drive pack to get hold of the favourite cabin which will take you from low power score all the way through to high power score. You don't need to get another cabin unless you want to try different weapons that don't overheat in which case there are better cabins to have. The drive pack is great for new players because once you've bought it for a handful of coin you can turn it into a shotgun build and put Luparas on there and it's a workable build and it'll work well and it's a simple build to play you just drive up to people and let rip with the shotguns and then once they've overheated use the favorite to cool them down and let rip again and it'll work this cabin and this style of build will work all the way up to clan wars and as you're going along you can upgrade it bit by bit when you can afford it you can upgrade you know, have a better, a tougher wheel with more durability on the front. You can add a chameleon, let yourself get up close to the enemy without being spotted and shot. You can upgrade the Luparas to sledgehammers and then to mazes. Just upgrade it bit by bit and you don't have any big sudden changes to make. And it'll work, which is great. Great for new players. And that's why it's my pack pick. That's why the drive pack with the bully build and the favourite cabin is my pack pick. There's another reason you might want to be buying a pack and that's if you've been playing the game for free for lots and you think oh this is a great game I want to continue playing it I'm gonna bung the publishers some money so that they make money because if they don't make money they're gonna turn they're not gonna pay for any more development and they're gonna turn the servers off. So that's why you should buy that. In which case you should buy whichever pack you feel like. That's it for this video, like and subscribe etc etc and I'll see you around.